Hello, my name is Andrew Spears and Helen and I own this house here, which is Wavertree House. Wavertree House is in Darwin River in the Northern Territory and it is named after a ship that my grandfather sailed in. Um, but it's also named Wavertree because of the red ash trees that are in the bushland around which have two-toned leaves and when the when the wind blows they wave in the breeze like this um, so we have waver tree house so this house is designed for airflow i followed the principles of benny burnett who was the government architect in the 1930s and 40s in darwin and i've used his principles to design this house for airflow the house should be oriented so that it picks up the prevailing breeze. So instead of being along the north, south or east-west axis as, as we would normally build them, then uh, we sh in Darwin, for instance, um, for this location, we would turn it slightly off the compass point axis um, so that we can pick up the northwesterly breezes in the wet season and the southeasterly breezes in the dry season. The other thing that Benny Burnett did with his windows was he made them louvered. Now his were asbestos louvers. These are metal louvers. They actually work a lot better. Um, we have metal louvers on the sunny side so that when the sun's on this side we can tip the louvers up and they will reflect the sun back on itself and not allow the heat into the room. The other thing is when you open windows like this with a louvered, you get 100% or 99.9% of the window open to the breeze. Whereas if you have sliding windows, which we have many of in Darwin and shouldn't have at all, uh, you can only open 50% of the window. Gable vents to let the hot air out of the roof. And um, so each end of this, this main room there are gable vents and where we couldn't have gable vents um, we had what they call wind workers. Wind workers um, are designed, they're actually a, an Australian design, they're actually a Queensland design um, which are meant to um, produce negative pressure under the roof in a cyclone so that the roof doesn't come off. Um, but of course during the rest of the year they are passively lifting, well, act, sorry, actively lifting because they're a venturi pipe and they're actively lifting the hot air out of the top of the roof. Um, so we have um, active um, ridge vents as well as gable vents in order to get the hot air out. Now what we also have is we have um, what they call cathedral ceilings here, um, which give you plenty of headroom above above the people. Um, it gives you a psychological feeling of airiness and, and spaciousness, um, but it also allows the hot air to rise up above the people and uh, exit out into the sky. Where we, where we have, do have flat ceilings, like under this mezzanine, the ceilings themselves um, are perforated to allow the air to go up through the ceiling. And when we're talking about roofs for tropical houses, there is one very important critical aspect that you have to pay attention to, and that is where the insulation goes and what the insulation is, what type it is. It has to be reflective insulation, preferably with an air gap built into it, like Aircell, to mention one of the many brands, but it must be reflective and it must, must be installed under the roof cladding with an air gap between it and the roof cladding. So it has to be under the battens or under the, the um, uh, rafters so that there's an air gap between the roof cladding and the insulation so that it reflects the heat, the, the radiant heat from the roof back into that air gap and then the warmed air will flow up the roof and out the ridge vent 
and take it away, <coughs> excuse me, before it gets into the room. Now in this roof here, the insulation is just under the, the ceiling cladding. So that, in actual fact, because the, the ceiling is perforated at night, we have a starry sky um, because the reflective insulation shines little pinpricks of light through the, through the ceiling and it looks, looks very pretty. Um, it's an unintended consequence of having your roof insulation in the right place. Builders in Darwin want to put that reflective insulation straight under the roof cladding. In fact, they, they screw the roof cladding onto the insulation and as a result, practically no other roof in Darwin, other than this one, works properly uh, in the way that the insulation manufacturers intended it to perform. One of the other features of Burnett houses is that where he had to put a wall across the prevailing breeze, he put louvers in them. So the one wall that we have that runs across the, the prevailing breeze in this house is louvered. It can be left open. The internal walls, except for the toilet wall, for obvious reasons, um, the, all the internal walls don't reach to the ceiling. So they're open to the roof cavity so that the airflow can go right through over the tops of the walls as well and the hot air can escape. Now, our sewage from this house goes into a biolytic sewage treatment uh, tank, which is just like a septic tank, only it's aerated and it's full of bugs that do the same thing to the, to the sewage um, as the soil would. Um, it has worms and it has rat-tailed maggots and things like that in there that, that eat up all the cellulose. And then the water is pumped out of the tank uh, onto the fruit trees. Our house is off-grid, so we don't have town water to this block. And so we rely on harvesting the rainwater um, from the roof. The whole house runs entirely on rainwater. We don't have a bore. The other off-grid aspect of this house is that it's not on the electricity grid. It is powered entirely from the sun with our solar panels. And we have a battery system, so the whole house runs off of solar power.